Recently, CNN revealed a U.S. Department of Energy memo from June 8th, documenting a suspected leak at the Taishan nuclear power plant in Guangdong, China. The nuclear power plant was set up as a joint venture between China General Nuclear Power Group, the CGN, and Electricity de France, the EDF, with a 70% and 30% share split, respectively, with the CGN as the management decision maker. Subsequently, CGN, the controlling party, responded and made it clear that the environmental monitoring data showed that the indicators of the Taishan nuclear power plant and its surrounding environment were all normal and that there was no nuclear radiation leakage. On June 15th, the Chinese foreign ministry said there were no abnormalities at the nuclear power station, and a trending post on Sina Weibo accused Western media of spreading rumors. On June 16th, China's National Nuclear Safety Administration, the NNSA, stated that increased radioactivity in the first circuit of Unit 1 of the Taishan nuclear power plant was mainly related to fuel rod damage, a common phenomenon, and denied that a radiation leak had occurred. The Taishan nuclear power plant is located along the coast of Guangdong, less than 100 kilometers from the economically developed and densely populated Guangzhou urban area about 130 kilometers from Hong Kong and Shenzhen urban areas, and less than 100 kilometers from Zhuhai and Macau. If a nuclear accident were to occur, it would be a humanitarian disaster of enormous proportions. The contaminants could also enter the sea and spread further. How is it that a problem with a Chinese nuclear power plant is discussed by the U.S. government and released through the U.S. media? The story is a bit complicated, and we need to take a look at the source. Framatom, a subsidiary of EDF, provides the equipment and technical support for the suspected leaky reactor. The company sent a letter to the U.S. Department of Energy saying that as of May 30th, there was an increase in noble gases in the primary circuit of a reactor at the Taishan nuclear power plant. How much of an increase? The report said that due to the increasing number of failures, the Chinese Nuclear Safety Administration revised the upper limit of the safety value, which was more than twice the initial limit. According to the revised upper limit, it is 90%, so it's likely to be much higher than the normal standard. This is the data from May 30th, and now another two weeks have passed, during which time the leaking gas may have increased. On June 16th, China's National Nuclear Safety Administration, the NNSA, confirmed that the increase in the concentration of noble gases in the primary circuit of the Taishan-1 EPR plant is related to a few damaged fuel rods. It stated the increase is a common phenomenon and is still in accordance with the requirements of the plant's operating technical specifications. CNN spoke with Rofer, a retired nuclear scientist from Los Alamos National Laboratory, who said it means some of the containers or containment devices are broken. A gas leak usually means there's a more serious problem, and if some components related to the nuclear fuel is broken, that's an even more serious problem. The Chinese side did not disclose what gas was leaking or to what extent, but the result was that China's nuclear safety department changed its standards and raised the safety limit for the release of hazardous substances, or the plant would have to be shut down according to regulations. But after the hazardous gas release limit was revised and exceeded that of the French standard, Framatum was under pressure and had to find a way to solve the problem. Now what does that have to do with the United States? because they need to use the technology from the United States to solve this problem. And the technology is subject to U.S. control. You have to apply it to the U.S. Department of Energy for a waiver in order to use it. That's why the U.S. government is involved in this matter. One of the conditions for the U.S. government to grant the waiver was that it had to be an imminent threat, not an emergency waiver. So Framatum wrote in a memo to the U.S. government, this situation now poses an imminent threat to site personnel and the public so Framatum is urgently requesting. Did the U.S. government approve it? The report doesn't say. It just says that the U.S. National Security Council held several meetings on this, communicated with the French government, and contacted the Chinese government. But it doesn't say what the outcome of the contact was, and that the U.S. is following the progress of this. This happened during the G7 summit that just ended, but it was not a topic of conversation at the meeting. Things are still in the progress of developing, and more news may come out soon. On June 13th, CGN announced that the nuclear units had completed their overhaul as planned and were back online on June 10th. All environmental data tests are normal. 
Overhaul is a different magnitude and process of repair compared to routine maintenance, which is usually done when the equipment has serious loss of function and is already failing. But the announcement did not say why the overhaul, just that the overhaul was done on June 10th and the problem was resolved. On the equipment supplying side, Framatum, the attitude is not clear. Since the harmful gas leakage has exceeded the French standards, the problem is not only extremely damaging to its reputation, but may also cause legal issues. In this case, it should insist on shutting down the power plant first before the overhaul. Since the technical power was in their hands, this was doable if they had insisted, but it seems they complied with China's request to try to resolve the problem in the face of danger while the plant was still operating. Frematum's application to the US government says that there is an imminent threat to both site personnel and the public, but the press release to AFP on the 14th makes no mention of the leakage at all and says that the data is within the safety limits of the operation, which is inconsistent. The Biden administration is also swinging from side to side. On one hand, they're saying it doesn't constitute an emergency yet. But on the other hand, they gave the June 8th memo to CNN to make it public and causing everyone to feel like it's an emergency. What's the story here? The Chinese media also acted very differently in the case of the Taishan nuclear leak. The Chinese media and networks have mainly denied the leak and attacked the US and other Western media for creating hype about the Chinese nuclear plant. However, they didn't block out the news as they did in the past. Some experts on Chinese issues believe that the Chinese side hopes to obtain the relevant nuclear technology from the United States. The CCP has an over-the-top mindset for dealing with problems, and any technology could be utilized by the military or for other purposes. The US does not want to open up nuclear technology to the CCP, but if there really was a nuclear meltdown and the US refuses to provide the technology necessary to solve the problem, then there is a risk of a serious disaster. Then the US will have to provide the technology. This is why the Chinese media did not block out the news. At the same time, the CCP has been dispelling rumors and not acknowledging nuclear leaks in order to fuel public opinion. Nuclear technology is a major issue for the security of the world, including the United States, and there are constant requests in the CCP to expand its nuclear arsenal and to provide a nuclear deterrent to the United States. So the top levels of the US government would not dare to lift the nuclear technology embargo on the Chinese side, or it would lead to massive public opposition. But before a potential large-scale humanitarian disaster, the population would likely agree to open up the technology to the Chinese side. A limited release of information through the media would first prepare the public psychologically, and then the next step might be to gradually ease the embargo on the Chinese side. Facilitating something that could lead to controversy requires reasoning that is absolute and unquestionable, and avoiding a humanitarian disaster seems like an appropriate reason. China's nuclear power growth is considered to be fast in the world, with 49 nuclear units in operation as of last year generating 4.94% of the country's total electricity. China plans to reach more than 7% in nuclear power by 2025. Of the current top 10 nuclear disasters in the world, Japan has three, the United States has three, and the former Soviet Union has three. China has already surpassed Japan in 2018 in terms of nuclear power units in operation and plans to surpass the United States by 2030. With no serious nuclear accidents reported in China to date, can China really escape Murphy's Law?